What's up guys? Another work Wednesday here. Weeks go by fast. They fly by. So today, man, I'm just I'm just getting going for the day. Um, we've got a big payday today. We finally close on this nightmare flip. So I'll tell you a little more about that. I've talked about that a little bit on some other videos, but um, finally close so everybody can finally get paid. Um, of course, the contractors and all that got paid already, but talking about everybody in the company. So that's exciting. Um, but yeah, man, just getting going. Looking at our system today, we've got we've got a good um, cold call lead that just came in. We got a good radio lead. <clears throat> Couples going through a divorce. I heard the voicemail, um, and our main acquisition girls already called her, called them back. Um, so that's a good one. We've got man, we had like four or five good pay per click leads in the last couple of days. <clears throat> so all's looking good. Um, last week I I ended up losing an acquisition manager, which is unfortunate, but it's probably for the better for both of us. Um, so I am on the hunt, looking for at least one more. I'll probably hire two more because um, you'll learn in this business. You know, you've got to hire all the time because people just aren't as good as they say they are, or they won't do what they say they will do. So. You know, probably need to hire two or three of them because one of them will stick, most likely, um, and that's just the way the way it works, you know. But um, yeah, so just checking in the system and everything's looking pretty good today. Got some good leads coming in, and obviously looked at my bank statement today. The big deposit did come through this morning from yesterday's closing, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. So I bought, I closed on this house. So our acquisitions got it, um, got the contract in December of 2020. Um, I actually closed on it because we were gonna, we tried to wholesale it, but you know, no buyers were willing to even pay enough for us to make more than like five or six grand. And you know, in our company, we like to make at least 10 to 15 on every deal. So if we can't do that, I usually end up taking it down myself where we try to renegotiate it to where we can make that. Um, so uh, I ended up closing on it myself January, like January 4th or something like that. So we started the renovations, okay? And this was a deal that it was a two bedroom house, one bathroom and a single car garage, which I have done a video on that actual flip. But what I didn't tell you on that flip because after the fact we did different things. So anyways, we remodeled the two bed, one bath, kept the single car garage thinking that, okay, a young family, or a single mom or somebody would appreciate the garage still. So anyways, we went through that whole process, listed the house. I think we listed it in March sometime, maybe mid-March. Um, so we listed it as a 2-1 with a single car and obviously listed it lower because the, most of the comps were three bedrooms. So we got a, an offer, but it was, it was kind of low. We would have only made maybe 15 to 20 grand on the flip. And I wasn't willing to do that. So we had it listed literally about a week and a half and I pulled it off the market. I told my realtor like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and convert this garage to a, to a third bedroom because I just think more people are looking for a 3-1 without a garage than a 2-1 with a garage. So, and it increases the value of that three. So we took it off the market, we remodeled it again, converted that third bedroom. And I also ended up converting because there was two big walk-in closets in the hallway um, just like coat closets. So I ended up converting the big one into, you know, and we straightened it all out to where it's it's just like an open kind of room. Um, it didn't have a doorway or anything and like really leveled it out on the ceiling so it, it looked like it was on purpose. Anyways, we converted that to like a small little office nook with a granite counter top and everything for the computer. And then that third bedroom, you know, where, where the garage was obviously. So about a week and a half after that, um, we listed it again. We got an offer, um, a couple of thousand over asking that we accepted. Obviously, once you accept an offer, it takes you a couple of weeks to go through the inspections and everything like that. So anyways, after inspections, the deal busted, you know, because this inspector was crazy picky and they said that we needed to replace the decking underneath the brand new roofing that we just put on so I was like that's crazy but I was willing to do it you know because the offer was good enough we would still make a good 35 close to 40 grand so 
I was willing to do it, uh, but the, the buyer walked because I, I guess they figured, well, it needs a new roof, but we literally put that new roof on like right before we listed it the first time. But the inspector said it needed a new decking, not just a roof. Anyways, so they walked. We kept it listed. And, and mind you, after we relisted this, after the the 2-1, uh, when we converted it to a 3-1, we actually listed it $20,000 higher than our initial listing um, just because it was worth more now. You know, it's a three-bedroom. So, and, you know, it had an office now, basically. So, anyways, um, we ended up getting another offer about a week and a half later. I mean, we had a couple of other smaller offers, but, you know, didn't accept. But about a week and a half later, so now it's like, it's May at this point. By the time we got this other offer that was good, and it was several thousand over asking. And um, went through the whole inspection period. Obviously, this inspector was, was picky as well. Most of them are, but he didn't say anything about the roof because the roof is brand new and perfect. But there were other things that we took care of, which is fine. Um, but... Um, it didn't appraise so it actually appraised six thousand dollars under what we sold it for and which is funny because literally three houses down from ours there's a house that actually sold so ours was selling for 115 a square foot is what we our contract was for um, three houses down actually sold for 116 a square foot and I actually closed on a flip a month prior we closed in April I think um, literally a block over so I could probably throw a rock to that house because it was literally a block a block over and around the same in the same uh, kind of area uh, of street wise so literally just right across the street as the crow flies at least um, but that one sold for 116 a square foot so there are definitely two comps right next to it that sold for higher than what we sold and they still came back six thousand dollars less even after we showed them our entire remodeling list, what we spent on it, those two comps and everything. So anyways, um, yeah, but it is what it is. But I was like, man, I don't want to lose six grand, you know, over this crazy appraiser. So um, we agreed to do, you know, we would take some off and the buyers will come to closing with cash. So we agreed to 2,500, that's all they could come up with. And we're just taking the 4,500 hit or 3,500 hit, I guess. Um, so that's what we did. So, anyways, we got to okay. Now it's closing week, right? This was last week, so we're supposed to close last Friday. And um, so on Wednesday, my realtor calls me, and he said, "Hey, well, I'm, I'm always like, hey, Stan, what's going on? How you doing?" And he's like, "I'm good, but you're not." <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. What happened now? You know, because this whole thing has been like crazy already so he's like well somebody broke into your house and stole everything I'm like okay what does everything mean he's like well they took the front doorknob they took the front deadbolt they took all your doorknobs they took the thermostat off the wall they stole your new stove your new dishwasher your new garbage disposal broke a window or two there's holes in the wall because they stole the custom cabinet, uh, you know, double vanity cabinet that we did in the bathroom with the granite countertop on top of it. Stole all that. There's holes all in the bathroom walls from ripping that out. You know, just all this mess. And I'm like, are you serious? So, um, so anyways, yeah, he was serious. So this was, this was on Wednesday. He said the neighbor actually called the cops because when they were pulling up, you know, the people were pulling out in a box truck evidently so it actually damaged the roof and the guttering as well because they backed up the box truck to the front door which you know it's got the covered porch and it hit the roof and gutter so anyways I was scrambling I was like okay well it is what it is you know that's just part of the business if, you know unfortunately um, but yeah I mean I wasn't happy about it but at the same time you just move forward and keep going so um, I immediately obviously got on the phone trying to find my contractor because I found this new contractor man he's been amazing uh, I bought this house in a smaller town that we tried to wholesale nobody there's no buyers out there nobody was willing to go that far and it's close to a major metro but it's still a little bit further um, than I mean than we would typically you know take down but no buyers for it but we got the house at such a still of a price that I'm like I'm not letting this go so I close on it myself only because the contractor lived next door because the seller 
told me how awesome this contractor was. So I had several conversations with the contractor before I closed on the house just to make sure, you know, she wasn't just trying to get me to buy it, you know, and then this guy doesn't do anything for me. Anyways, this guy turns out to be the best contractor I've ever had, like by far. So I say that to say this because this flip, you know, this break in, um, I was trying to get a hold of that contractor because he's my main guy now. But he was nowhere to be found, so I would literally call his phone, and it would just, uh, it would, it would go straight to voicemail and say this, this, um, or whatever it says, this uh, phone number is not accepting calls at this time, or something like that, something along those lines, which is crazy. Um, so that was on Wednesday, and actually I was trying to call him. Yeah, I think that's the first time I called him Wednesday. Um, so I called several times because I learned about this around three in the afternoon so obviously the rest of the day I was trying to call him and and text him it was just a weird coincidence because it was almost like well um, because you know the other realtor thought well this had to be like a disgruntled contractor or something How else, you know could they pull this off so quickly and easily um, so it man, you know, I was starting to doubt my guy you know because it did kind of make sense like wow it's a coincidence he's not even taking my calls now so who knows but um, anyways, I ended up uh, calling them forever and ever, Thursday, Friday. I couldn't get a hold of them, so I had to move to someone else. So I found somebody else Thursday, got the entire thing remodeled. Uh, we were still supposed to close on Friday if we could pull it off. But the only thing holding us back was like um, the guttering repair and the granite. Like the granite was three weeks out. And I'm like, that's not going to work. So we ended up, I found somebody else to, to do all the repairs and they went and picked up the granite themselves and they did the install instead of the granite company that I normally use. So anyways, we almost made it happen on Friday but didn't quite get there. Um, so we ended up closing on Monday instead. But in the meantime, I sent a buddy of mine out to the guys, my contractor's house, because it's right next to the other house that we're flipping. So I'm like, I don't know exactly where he lives, but I know he lives next door. So it's only, you got a couple of options. So he went out there, he was willing to do it for me. I paid him a hundred bucks to drive out there because it's about you know 30 minutes out there and back. So he actually found the guy and my contractor was like, yeah, I've been trying to scrounge up some money to turn my phone back on. So obviously, as you know, most business owners are only in the business because they're good at their trade or they're good at their what they do. Um, they're not in the in business because they're good at in business. And that's just the case. Uh, I've been around small business owners most of my adult life because I used to sell ads to them. Um, and most of them are terrible at business. You know, they don't understand uh, marketing or advertising or business in general. Typically, they're just a good plumber or a good handyman or a good accountant or whatever it might be. But they're not typically good at business. So that's the case with my contractor. He's a terrible businessman, but an amazing contractor and an amazing person. Um, so, anyways, we found him. I got to talk to him via my friend's phone, and it was a huge relief. You know, he was just like, "Yeah, I've just been trying to scrounge up money. You know, I don't want to bother you because you've already helped me out a lot because I fronted him some money for some others for another job, actually, like thirty five hundred in material. But it was um, promised to do this other flip that we have in the works. Um, promised to do the labor for free, which is crazy because um, it's going to be a pretty big job. Which I'll still pay him, but It'll just be less. Um, anyways, so we found the guy. Got, I was super happy that we actually ended up getting a hold of him. Super thankful my friend went out there and did it for me. But um, so all was well. So he ended up finishing because you know we didn't have anybody to do the gutters um, because the other contractors couldn't do gutters, but they did everything else. So he went back over there and kind of just did the guttering and did the punch list for me on Sunday. So we finally closed Monday. Um, and now that the payment just came through because they didn't send the wire till Tuesday. So now it's Wednesday morning and we got paid finally. So yeah, that was a good one. So <clears throat> so now, you know, I'm doing um, the payroll for that particular deal, you know, because I let my acquisition share in the flip on this. You know, it's delayed gratification for them because they got this deal in December. But now they're finally going to get paid because I'm paying them on the flip side, um, which... We paid a whole lot more on this property than we should have because of all the issues along the way. I mean, January to you know June now, we'd like to get out of a flip in two months, three tops, 
and it's been you know six now so that's been brutal holding costs and, and everything else and remodeling it three times now <laughs> so um, it's been it's been crazy but the good news is we'll still make you know 30 grand or so which is not what we wanted but at the same time you know getting all the money back that I got into it and you know a 30 grand profit you know it's cool we made a lot of people a lot of money along the way you know contractors and places we purchased material from and that kind of thing so at the end of the day it's still a good day um, we finally got paid on it which you know this business has a lot of ups and downs wholesaling real estate in general and once you get into flipping if you do um, and then buy and hold you know, I spend a lot of my time um, just trying to find good people to occupy my properties which we have three empty properties right now so um, yeah I need to hire somebody to take that part over for me but at, for right now I'm doing the project manager management you know for these flips and also um, kind of managing as far as placing tenants of course I've told you before I do rent to own only so there's no real um, you know managing the property and the people necessarily it's just getting somebody placed but after that it pretty much manages itself so anyways yeah so that was um, it was a crazy flip that we finally finished so now I'm just paying a couple of utilities online um, paying people out doing commission statements for this particular flip so my acquisition manager will actually make more than they would have because normally you know if we were to actually wholesale that house we would have made like five grand um, so they wouldn't have made much money none of us would have made much money but now you know they're making money based on you know a, roughly a thirty thousand dollar profit as opposed to a five thousand dollar profit which is cool um, and at the same time you know I get paid you know as a project manager for the deal too so I'll make a little more as well so anyways hopefully this wasn't too boring for you it was a, a crazy roller coaster of a flip <laughs> so I uh, didn't mean for this video to be all about that, but that's what it is, man. That's just the start of my day and figuring that out. We've got um, we got four new deals last week between a couple of different states. So we are working on those currently. And yeah, it seems like we always have 15 to 17 deals in escrow at all times. Um, just because things are, you know, it just takes time. Some things will fall off because they closed. Uh, new ones get added, you know, that's just kind of the, the way it is for us. Typically always around 17, 15 to 17 in escrow. But right now we have, we still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven deals assigned that we should be getting paid on in the next couple of weeks. We've still got two of them that's being marketed and we've got those four brand new deals that uh, we're still like getting going. We're not even marketing those yet because we literally just got those recently. So anyways yeah that is where we're at at this time i appreciate you guys thanks for watching thanks for staying tuned uh sticking around for a little while and listening to me um please like share and subscribe if you haven't already i would love to have you as a subscriber uh, i try to bring value as much as possible hopefully you can learn this game because um, i'm super grateful for what god has given me and for him showing me you know what wholesaling is you know almost three years ago now so um, it's definitely changed my life I'll never stop doing it um, and it just leads to bigger and better things but I always do wholesaling because it's that constant big paydays um, and, it, and it helps kind of helps fund all the other projects that we got going so anyways thanks for watching like share and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys tomorrow <laughs>